the hope of the saints. God has given us a life to live here on earth, but thanks be to God that this is not the end of the story. If you've been born again, I know somebody ought to get excited. If you've been born again, this is just a little taste. Yet the main course is yet to come. Jesus is going to return. Yeah, Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, he's looking for a church without spot or wrinkle. Say, how are you going to do that? Well, he's going to straighten it all out. Yeah, I know we got some problems now. We got some issues. But if Jesus, when it's all over. And so we just in the sanctification process on our way to our glorious home. Anybody glad? That you have a blessed hope in Jesus the Christ. A great, great hope. Let us pray, God. We just thank you now. You brought us to this time when you speak to us. God, we thank you for this opportunity to crack the open the record. See what you have to say to us. God, we declare that your word is true. It is infallible. There is no error in it. Help us now. Open our hearts and our minds. That we might see the truth of the text. God, help us that once we see and once we hear that we would apply it and become doers and not hearers only. Thank you, God. God, we know we can't do anything without the help of your Holy Spirit. So I just pray, God, that you would grant a special anointing of Heavenly Father that would allow the preacher to preach with conviction and clarity, open hearts and minds that we might receive. God, we expect that you're going to do great things in these next few minutes. God, once it's all over, we will give you the praise and the glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. To our deacons, other officers, members, and friends, my wife and name, we greet you in the name of Jesus and tell you it's good to be here. I'm telling you it's good to be here. I don't know if you've been checking the record and the announcements, but there are those who have, in this last couple of weeks, we've lost some folk around us. People have lost loved ones. And, and so it's a privilege to be in God's house once again. It's a, it's a privilege to be in the house. So I won't hold you too long. I'll say to the children, if y'all ready to go home, y'all got to pay attention. If I feel like you're drifting off, then I gotta like go back. I said this morning, and say it two or three times to make sure you got it. But if if y'all just y'all sitting right in front, so I look like y'all at least paying attention. It might help us to move a little faster. Amen. And that ain't that's not just relegated to the children. <laughs> Wrong folk too. It seems like y'all not with me. Put a lot of time into this. I want at least y'all at least listen. Yeah, so, look like you're not listening. I might get offended and keep trying to press the point. So, so let's let's see what the word of God says. Second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four. Our consideration we look at verses 1 through 5. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning at verse 1, the record says this I charge thee, therefore, before Therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, 
who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Here we go. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching eyes. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch, thou in all things endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap for themselves teachers having itching ears. I just want to talk about faithful service in an unfaithful world. Help us, Holy Ghost. I bring news, and it's really not news, because if you have been living in these last few years, there seems to be uh, an assault on truth. There, there seems to be an attack on truth. That there seems to be, now I'm talking about the world right now, we'll get to us in a minute, but I'm talking about the world. There seems to be an acceptance of untruth as long as it benefits somebody. Can I get a witness here? That, that's, that's dangerous. And so I, I, I want to I I impress upon our young folk because they're like sponges. As much as they are at New Hope, they are also at school. As much as they're at New Hope, uh, whether you know it or not, they watch some television. They listen to some, some things and, and they can be led to believe. That is all right to tell a lie. Can I get a witness here? It's all right to bend the truth as long as I get a benefit out of it. Anybody with me here? And, but, but I stopped by to warn us this morning that, that if we aren't careful, the text suggests that the same thing can happen in the house of God. The text we go find out says that if if we aren't careful, in fact, it really doesn't say if; it says it will. There's going to be a time when folk who profess to be born again are going to reject the truth. Yeah, in favor of hearing what you want to hear. Can I get a witness here? Uh, it, it, that's a sad indictment, but, but and, and well, let me just cut across the field and tell you the day is already here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's already here. If, 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 if you are awake, you will find that there's an assault even in the church among some folk regarding the truth of the text. And so, and so, and so, and so, Paul, Paul is, in, in, at the time of this writing, Paul is in jail. He, he's locked up in, in jail, and, and not only is he in jail, Paul knows this is his final imprisonment. In other words, Paul knows that Nero's chopping block is, 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 is only horizon. But what I like about Paul is that he does not cry and lament about his situation. What he does is he says, I fought a good fight. Can I get a witness here? I, I, I finished my, my course, but, but before I leave, I, I need to talk to my son. Can I get a witness here? He, 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 says, he says, Timothy, I, I worked with you, but, but now I'm getting ready to leave. 
believe. And I, I need you to be ready. I need you to be ready for what's coming down the pipe. So he, he writes this, this second letter to his son Timothy. When you, I said this morning when you read the first letter, the first letter was more formal in nature. But, but, but when he's about to leave and, and he now gets personal with Timothy. He, he writes an informal letter. You know how it is. If, if you know you're getting ready to leave, you want to make sure that those who you love got the message you were trying to give them before you check out. And so, and so we'll find out in a minute that Paul emphasizes to Timothy to keep on providing sound teaching. Concerned about preaching and teaching sound doctrine and and the, and the and the problem is is that you're gonna have to preach it and teach it where folk don't want to hear it. Can I get a witness here? So 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 first Timothy chapter one verse eleven he says Paul says according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God which was committed to my trust. Yeah he, he says he says he says look he says not only to me, but he's saying to us if you've been born again. He says, there's something that has been entrusted to you. Can I, are y'all with me here? He, he says this gospel of Jesus Christ, the, the word of God has been entrusted to you. And when somebody entrusts something to you, the aim is to put something in your hands and so that you provide care and protection. We ought to care about God's word. And in fact, we ought, to, we ought to protect it and defend it at all costs because I tell you, there's the only liberation for mankind is found in God's word. Yeah. You can look at Dr. Field all you want to. Go ahead and look. I don't know why you watch all that stuff. Yeah, I do because I, I, I need to get a picture of what's going on in the world. What, what folk thinking about? So I try to stay in contact with, with it, it, some of it is foolishness, but I, I need to, you, you need to know. Because if you are, you can be caught unaware. It can creep right up on you if you're not aware of what's, what's going on. And so God had, he entrusted Paul with the spread of sound doctrine. And, and so now Paul says, uh, Timothy, I'm entrusting you uh, to do the same thing that I've been doing. He, he writes in 1 Timothy 6, 20 and 21, O oh, Timothy, keep thou that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and opposition of science falsely so called which some professing have erred concerning the faith grace be with thee amen listen listen we call it we are called to tell the truth called to tell the truth and so so here's here's the picture what Paul Paul is doing he says it was entrusted to me Timothy now I'm entrusting it to you so that you can then entrust it to other folk. And can I get a witness here? Can you can you see the chain? Now, you see, you see, you see, here it is, here it is. I'm, I'm looking around and, and there's some folk in here that got some great hair in your head. And, and, and I don't know when and where, but 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 we're gonna check out of here. And if we don't entrust it rightly to these young folks, who is gonna be on in line to entrust it and keep the chain going? So and so and so, he 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 said to Timothy, in Second Timothy two and two, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. That's that's the supply line. You teach, put it in somebody else's hand. They teach, put it in somebody else's hand, and, and you just keep it rolling. Kind of get a witness here, but 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 if you drop the ball in the middle, you fumble the ball in the middle, and and the other team gets the ball. Anybody with me here? And you get the ball gets in the wrong hands, and, and if it gets in the wrong hands, what the what the what the what the wrong team will do? They will twist the truth of the doctrine and 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 put a little bit here and a little bit there before you know it. 
is no longer the truth. So let's go to the text. To the text, the first, first thing I want to see in the text is the head. The head. Not this head, but the head. He, he begins, 2 Timothy 4 and 1. He, 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 what, what it is, it's a continuation. You got to read, read the whole, whole, whole letter. It's a continuation of him outlining, outlining Timothy's assignment, his responsibility. He, he first says, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, he says, I solemnly charge you, Timothy, in the sight and presence of God. I don't know if you if you ever go down to the courthouse right. as a witness or well just go as a witness. I'd rather us all go as witnesses. <laughs> We're witnesses. But, 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 but before you before you before you can give some testimony, they say raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony that you are about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? And so, and so in that same thought pattern, he, he says, Timothy, in the presence of God, raise your right hand. Can I get a witness here? He, he, he says, because you have been appointed to preach the gospel, and, 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 and what he does, he links God to Father and God to Son, and, 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 and that lets us know that God is one. Can I get a witness here? Grammatically, he, he forms this, 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 this term so that it highlights that God the Father and God the Son are one. They're, they're equal, but, but, but they have a division of duties. I, I, I'm not going to repeat this, but I guess I'll repeat it again for us this, this, this afternoon is, is that we need to make sure we keep our eye on the unity of the Trinity. Yeah, how, 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 how all can be equal, but none are arguing about who's supposed to be doing what. The church, let me tell you something, that if we could just get to that point, and listen, whatever you call to do, do your thing. Whatever I'm called to do, I do my thing. Whatever, whatever other folks, and look, 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 if we all do our thing, the whole thing will come together. The problem is, the problem is, we get Joseph, who, but look, God knew me before I was formed in my mother's womb. And he knew me and he knew you. And so he knew exactly what you were supposed to do and what you were capable of doing. Just be happy that you're doing something. Just be happy that he called you to do something. If all of us just do our part, oh, we would be unified to the point where the world couldn't do nothing with us. The problem is we so fragmented. We're all over the place. And so everybody can see when you fragmented, it leaves a gap in between. And when there's a gap in between, stuff can slip on in. Anybody with me here? And so he 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 lets he lets Timothy know Timothy lip. Look, don't you ever, don't you ever get to the point where you forget the head. Let me tell you something. The head of the church is Jesus Christ. I, I stop by to tell you, the head of the church is not the pastor. The head of the church is not the deacons. The head of the church is not the trustee. The head of the church is not the members. The head of the church is the head of the church is Jesus Christ. He paid the price. He paid the price. None of us could pay to buy the church. He died at the cross and his blood was shed. And, and so he has the right to call the shots. And so we could cut down on a whole lot of arguing. A whole lot of foolishness. A whole lot of out of control business meetings and all these other things. We can, we can cut all that out. If we just look at what the head said. We got a problem? No problem. What does the head say? And, and it's all in the record. It might take us a few minutes to find it, but it's in there. Sit down. Let me tell you. Oh, have mercy. I don't want to go in. I'm trying to get us out of here. But, 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 but the problem is, the problem is self. Self want what self want. And, and if you get a bunch of selfies in the house, all the selfs want what the selfs want, you got a problem on your hands. And the only thing that can arrest the self is going and talking to the head. Galatians 1 and 8 says, but 
Though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. What what you mean, Paul? Paul always talking about Jesus. Yeah, I don't care whether whenever he presents an argument, it's gonna always come back to the head. It's gonna always come back to Jesus. And so what that word accursed means, really, it means to excommunicate. In other words, it means to religiously back. In other words, if anybody comes, and this is a warning, if anybody show up in this house or any other house of God, and they are not preaching Jesus Christ, him crucified, death, burial, and resurrection, if they come in with another gospel, you're supposed to kick them out of the house. You got the authority to do it. Not on your authority, but the book says, let it be a curse. It's got about to tell us children, don't you ever let anybody tell you that there's any other head, there's any other head of the church, there's only one savior of the world, and he is Jesus the Christ. He is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the first born from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. So he charges Timothy before God and Jesus Christ and then he, he goes on and says who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearance. He identified the fact that the head of the church, Jesus, is also the judge. He the judge of the living and he's the judge of the dead. And I tell you whether you are alive or dead at the second coming of Jesus Christ, you're going to have to give an account to Jesus Christ. The head. Yeah, you can talk about what you did all you want to do, but I stopped by to tell you the head got the record. Yeah, the head has the record, and it's an infallible record. You see, when we keep records, sometimes we miss a call, we miss a T, we, we left, we miss a period, but I, this is an infallible God. He knows everything, and so your record, it will be without dispute. Yeah, any charges against you, you ain't no sense in appealing. There's no, there's no appeal period. Whatever the charges are, whether it's good or bad, it will stand. Righteous judge. Righteous judge. For we all, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That everyone may receive the things done in the body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Yeah, what we're trying to do is stack up some good. I hate to get before Jesus. And everything he starts checking off is in the bad category. Can I get a witness here? I, I just, now hopefully, I know it's, it's, it's some stuff. I, I can tell you, I'll tell you, I can't say how he's going to handle it, but I, I'm not going to lie to you. There are some bad things on my record. Y'all looking at me strange. There, there, there's, some, there's some bad stuff on the record. But I'm trying, and I'm trying to, to move that negative and, and have more positive. Because I got to give an account. So, so, so the judge, head is Jesus Christ. And, and, and whether you reject it or, 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 or agree with it, it really don't matter. It's not going to alter the truth. For it is written, as I live, said the Lord. Every knee shall bow to me. Every tongue shall confess to God. I, I didn't say this in Romans 14 and 11. And then if you don't really believe me, go to Philippians 2, 10 and 11. That, every, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God, the Father. So when he, at his appearing, he will appear as king and judge. Can I get a witness here? And, and, and everybody gonna, gonna see it. He will establish his reign of glory. His eternal kingdom will be in 
full view. So, 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 so he, he establishes first to Timothy, look Timothy, listen, I charge you. Make sure you don't never get away from the head. If, if you want to argue something, if you want to argue a point, argue Jesus, that he is the head. Then he goes to verse 2. And it's, 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 when you study this, it's, grammatically, it's a strange transition. He goes from verse 1, and then he makes an a abrupt and emphatic statement in verse 2. And he does it so that it will stand out. He's charged Timothy, but now he wants this to stand out, Timothy, what you got to do. Now, here's the remedy for, for the situation. He says, preach the word. And I said this morning, I said this morning, he's writing to Timothy, but he's writing to everybody who's been born again. All of us are preachers. And some are appointed to stand behind the sacred desk, but all of us are to preach a sermon. Can I get a witness here? Yeah, all of us ought to preach a sermon. If, if you ain't preaching it with your mouth, you, you ought to preach it with your walk. Can I get a witness here? Listen, 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 listen. The folk you come in contact with, you ought to preach a sermon to them based on walking according to the vocation for which you were called. In other words, you ought to act like a child of God. Folk, folk ought to know there's something different about you. Yeah, yeah. One of the best compliments I can get is say, man, you show sure ain't like you used to be. I love to hear that. Amen. Throw it up in my face. I'm glad you ain't like you used to be. Well, we all ought to get that compliment. Can I get a witness here? You see, the hope for mankind is not found in the philosophies of mankind. The hope for mankind is found in the word of God. So he tells Peter, preach the word. Yeah, he says, preach the word. Preach that there's hope in Jesus Christ and him alone. And so, and so, so, so he said, preach the word. What word? John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. So, so, so the hope for eternal life in the presence of God, it rests solely with the word. It rests with the low gods. It rests with Jesus Christ. And this must be preached. And I'm gonna tell you in a minute, but 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 folks start thinking that that talking about Jesus done got old fashioned. How in the world can when you talking about the head, the foundation of the church, he'll never be old fashioned. Yeah, yeah, maybe 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 need to refine it. It's not old fashioned so called preaching, but 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 the word of God can't be old fashioned. How then? Shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him who they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? In other words, if the church not telling the story, how is the story going to get told? You can't expect the devil to tell the story. You can't expect unbelievers to tell the story. You can't, you can't expect an unbelieving world to tell the story. So who else is left? To tell the story. Preaching the word of God. Serious business. Serious business. Looking at 12 years now, almost. I said this morning and I still get a little shaky. Not that I'm scared to preach, but I'm scared to make a mistake. Uh, this is this, this too, it's too important because folks like, yo, it's amazing to me. It, it amazes me. I look out, I say, folks actually sitting up listening to me. <laughs> it amazes me. People, y'all sitting up here listening to me. Blows my mind. And so, and so, I, I, I try to put as much time in preparation <clears throat> so I won't make a mistake. Yes, you will make a mistake sometimes, but, but this is delicate information. Not to be taken light. It's life and death. And as I said, it's not confined to me. It's all of us. It takes all of us to spread the word. It takes all of us. We have the responsibility. So Paul, he's intense. He's now intense. He's about to leave, so he's intense about making sure his successor 
understand the urgency of the matter. In his epistle to the Colossians, Paul wrote in chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, he said, With all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also involved, that I might make it manifest as I ought to speak. In other words, Paul said, the matter is so urgent, God, please open the door. How many of us pray in the morning, God, after we don't ask him for everything and all of that, how many of us say, God, in my daily walk, please open up a door so I can tell somebody about Jesus Christ. That's all Paul is saying. Paul, Paul said, God, you got to open the door. You, you got to put the situation in front of me so that I can tell somebody about Jesus Christ. And I tell you, he will do it. He will do it. But you got to have a mind that I'm looking for the door to be open. See, the door can be open and you walk right by the door. Can I get a witness here? See, I, you've heard me say this before. He'll open the door at Publix while you're looking at the cabbages. Anybody with me here? He'll, he'll, he'll open the door when, when you at the little, little store that my wife don't want me to go to and get that fried chicken. They got that little store they frying it right in the back room. It's good too. And, and, but, 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 but while you sitting there waiting for the chicken, he'll open up a door because somebody walk up behind you and make a comment that opens up the door. He'll have you going through the Winn Dixon line. And you got your tie or your Sunday go to meeting clothes on. And somebody will say, look like you've been to church. The door has been open. Anybody with me here? So, so now, 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 Paul is established. He said, preach the word. Tell Timothy to preach the word. And now, so the question becomes, when should I preach the word? The record says, be instant, in season. Out of season. Be ready when it's seasonably and unseasonably. In other words, he says in any season, it's appropriate to preach the word of Jesus Christ. It's, it, it's always appropriate to share the word whenever and whenever and wherever you can. In other words, in other words, he tells Timothy like he's telling us. He said, always be on duty. Always be on duty. Always have your, your belt on and your pants up and ready to go. Always have your equipment on. I, I ain't going to talk about what he said. Put on all this equipment so you ready to, to go into the battlefield. Get a witness here. So, so, so I, but I need to warn you. I need to make this warning. You can't tell somebody something that you don't know about. Y'all ain't with me here. You can't say something if you don't know something. In other words, in other words, in order to prepare for when the door gets open, you got to do some studying and some meditating on your own. Yeah, yeah. It's too late when the, when the door is open and I don't, my mouth is closed because I don't have any. Uh, listen, we talked about it in Bible study the other night. I said, now you, you playing a dangerous game. I play a dangerous game. If I do no preparation, get up here and never studied nothing, ain't looked at nothing, and talk about the Holy Spirit, gonna put it in my mouth. He can't put nothing in my mouth that's not already in me. He told Timothy in 2 Timothy 2 and 15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed. Rightly divided. The word of truth. So if you're going to be ready, I'm not saying you're going to know everything. You're not going to know everything in the Bible, but we ought to know some, some basic foundational kind of stuff that we can at least give somebody to plant a seed. But you can't plant a seed if you ain't got no seeds. You got to have something in your hand if you're going to plant it. I cannot give a witness here. And so, so, so he said, be ready all the time. Now, then he, then he goes on and says, now what, what am I supposed to, to do with this preacher? He said, well, he says, be ready to reprove. In other words, he says, be ready to convince somebody. You see, you have to be able to convince 
someone who has not been convinced about the word and not only convince them of the truth of the word, got to get them to the point of understanding that they need the word. Can I get a witness here? It is to put the word on trial. Now, here's the thing. Let me make this very, very clear. God's word does not need our help. What do you mean? You don't need to add nothing? You don't need to put no uh, salt and pepper on it? It's already seasoned food. Yeah, you, you don't need no hot sauce. You don't need anything on the word. Just put the word out there and make sure it's pure. It's already cooked. It's already done. Anybody with me here? Yeah, so... So, 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 so the whole idea is make sure I'm just telling the truth. It's not my job. It's not my job to make sure the person does what the word says. I can't make nobody do anything. The only thing God calls me to do is make sure I'm ready when the door opens to tell the truth. And God said, you just tell the truth. I'll handle the rest of the matter. Anybody with me here? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. It's good to use the illustrations and preaching to make sure to how to make the point, but make sure the illustration ties in with the truth of the word. Can I can I get a witness here? And so and so, because God says, so shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth, not my mouth. See, listen. Let me make this clear. You and you and I, we're just the vehicle through which the word flows. It's not our word. We don't have the power to make the word grow in anybody. All we are is to go in between. The one, listen, just be open for God to use you as the vessel to push the word out to the folk. And then you go and sit on down. You know, don't try to beat nobody up. Don't try to stay up 3 o'clock and 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning arguing with anybody about the word. Just tell them the truth. And let God do what he does. Because he says what? He says, it shall not return unto me void. It shall accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper in the thing I sin. And so he, he tells them first to reprove, and then he says, rebuke. Now rebuke is a little more powerful, a little more severe than, 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 than reprove. Here's the deal. Even in the church, when something is wrong, I got quiet on it. <laughs> when something is wrong, yeah. we are called yeah. to say, look, yeah. that's wrong. Yeah. I don't care if it's the preacher. Yeah. I don't care if it's the deacon that's been in the deaconing for 85 or 90 years. I don't care if it's mother so-and-so who've been so and so in for all these years, it really does not matter if it's wrong, it's wrong. And it needs to be calmed down. In love. Not to embarrass anybody, not to put anybody down, but if you just let wrong keep on going on, it's going to fester and it's going to grow until wrong will be the norm of what's going on. Anybody with me here? A rebuke is a sharp disapproval of an offender. That's everybody. And here's the thing about a rebuke. See, a rebuke assumes that the person who is in the wrong already know they're wrong. See, if you're a child of God, when you mess up, you know it. You really don't have to have nobody to really convince you. Now, I'm going to reprove that needs some convincing. But when you get to a rebuke, there's nothing to convince. Because the wrong stands on its own. The authority to give the rebuke is not with me. The authority to give the rebuke is rest in the wrong. Yeah. You don't need any convincing when you're wrong. Now, you can try to lie. You can try to act like I don't know what you're talking about. Listen, if you've been born again, Amen. Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. Yeah. Nobody has to convince you when you are wrong. Now, you can be in denial and just, <laughs> but the, the fact of the matter, the wrong stands on its own. 
But then he, then he, but, but here's the deal. Here's the next thing he tells him. To, he also says to exhort. That word exhort means at its root to encourage. In other words, in other words, if I just all I do is 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 is, is reprove and rebuke. You know, you got some reprovers and some rebukers. They make that they, they make that their job. Even at the church house. What you talking about? They just walking around looking for somebody to this. Now, they don't really know too much reproving. It's really rebuking. I, I just want to point out to you. See, see, you are not living right. You are not doing this and you are not doing that. And, and that's all they do. Act like y'all know what I'm talking about. It's all they do. It's all it is. All it is is walking around finding fault all the time. Looking, looking for something to, to pick at somebody with. I, I see your scab and I want to pull the scab off so you'll start bleeding. I wish I had a witness here. But 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 he says to he says he says the third thing is to exhort. Look, you gotta encourage folk at the same time. Oh boy. If we spend as much time encouraging each other as we spend finding fault with each other, things will really balance out. The reason that it's out of balance is there's not enough encouraging. I said this morning, I'll, I'll use this illustration again. Uh, when mama used to beat me, and I didn't say spank, I better not let anybody let me. But she going on the glory now, so you can't call the hotline on her. But 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 she but but when she would do it and and and, and I would be screaming and hollering you, I told the morning, you kidding me? No, oh, you kidding me? Don't hit me again. You kidding me? Move your hand. I move your hand. Then y'all know what I'm talking about. And, and, and I'm crying. I'm just crying. I feel feel like I lost everything. Mama don't like me anymore. She doing this to me and then she would leave me in the room for a while and I mean uh, you know you, you know when you're crying so hard and you have to take that deep breath and, and you crying and you crying and then after a little while I wish I had a witness here she would ease in the room put her arm around me so y'all could see what I see put her arms around me and say now I want you to understand that I did what I did. I know what she meant now, but I didn't know then. I did what I did because I love you. I had to let you know you were wrong because I love you. But, but, but she got her arms around me now. She's exhorting me. She's encouraging me. She said, wipe your tears. Get that stuff off around your nose. I wish y'all could see what I see. And, and, and she would put her arms around she said, now, I just want you to know that I'm still your mama. That's what God does. He, he, he said, I got to spank you, but I just want you to know that I'm still your mama. And then, 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 then mama would kind of dust me off a little bit, straighten up my clothes, wipe my nose, and then say, do you want an ice cream sandwich? I, I wish I had a little bit here. The only thing you specialize in is tearing folk down. And you have no capacity to build somebody up. Don't engage in the process at all. Because if you just tear folk down and never build folk up, only thing in your way is a bunch of ruined folk. And there's folk in the church that's been ruined because nobody they tore up Left them to say, but nobody encouraged them to keep on keeping on. There's gotta be, there's gotta be some gentleness. Yeah, gotta be some love. Paul says when you he said reprove, reprove, rebuke, exhort, but do them from a place of long suffering. And doctrine, doctrine means teaching. Listen, when you, if you, if you're going to tell somebody they're wrong, you need to be ready 
to tell them what needs to be done in order to get it right. Can I get away? In order, in order to be a teacher. When, when mama beat me, it was a teachable moment. Can I get a witness here? And, and so, 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 so be ready. If you're going to rebuke somebody, have some teaching of the word of God ready to discuss. Long suffering. The other thing, I ain't got time to talk about it, but we just so impatient with it. Yeah, just because just cause you got a little more learning, a little more growth, somebody's going a little slower than you. They in group two and you in group one. I wish I had a witness here. Now you looking down on them like you somebody. The best thing since ice cream is like bread. Listen, if God has prospered you to be a little higher in your Christian maturity, that comes with the responsibility of reaching back and helping someone else. Let me, let me, let me, let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. So, so, so I'm gonna close. We talked about the head. We talked about the hope. Finally, in the text, there's the hardness. And hardness in the text it says, "For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine." Now it gets personal. It's personal because now we talk about they. You know, this ain't the they we thinking. You know how we always talk about they. They did this. They did it. The they in the text are persons who profess to be Christian folk. These are folk in the church. He says right in the church, there are going to come a time when they will not endure sound can I get a witness here? And I stopped by to tell you in this month of February 2020, it's already here. Just travel a little while. Look at and listen to what folks are saying a little while. And you'll find out that, that folks really kind of getting away from telling the truth. I tell you what I really want to hear. I really want to, I want to go to church. And every time I go to church, I just want to hear some good, soft, you know, nice things. And you should. I said this morning, you shouldn't come to church and get beat up every Sunday. Yeah, yeah, but sometimes. Beat necessary. But they also got to sprinkle in some encouragement along the way. But, but, but he says, he says there are uh, Christian folk who will only going to grow to the point where they will only accept preaching that makes them feel good. I hate to warn you, every, but listen, I thought about this yesterday. I said even when there's some cut going on, you know, the word of God is like a two-edged sword, man. cut going and coming back. You know what I always still feel good? Because if, if I find myself in the text and I find that I'm wrong, I ought to feel good. Thank you, God, for, for pointing out. But, 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 but folks, uh, they, the, the text says they, won't, they don't really want that. They just want somebody to make you feel good all the time. The, the word sound is healthy. As Paul says, even in the church, there will be some who reject the healthy truth of God's word. People in the church Will, will, will have hardness of heart to the point that they will turn a deaf ear to the truth. They, they will become weary and tired of hearing about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, get this. Man, why are they always talking about Jesus? Well, what else? If he's the head of the church. Yeah, you, you, you gotta talk about Jesus. So he stresses to Timothy, though. He said, Timothy, let me tell you something. The harder they get, the harder you preach. Now we hard in terms of screaming and hollering. I'm, I'm talking about I'm talking about hard in terms of staying steadfast and telling folk the truth. It is the truth that's gonna set you free. So he says, this hardness is gonna be so hard. He says, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching. Is. Yeah, that word lust is a corrupt will. You see, when your will get corrupted, the only thing you crave is a corrupt doctrine. 
Yeah, and listen, listen, if you, if you operate in, in corrupt doctrine, you're going to operate in, in corrupt living. I wish I, I had a, a witness here. So Paul, Paul says a time is coming when people who are professed to be Christians, they're going to be drawn to preaching that accommodates their carnal desires and coddles their evil. In other words, as long as you don't ever talk about it, how I ain't living up to my standard as a child of God, I'm fine. Long as you don't preach about sin, it's it's all it's all right. Let's, let's just talk about other stuff. And not that Isaiah 30 and 10 says, which say to seers, see not. In other words, don't see nothing. Preach it. Just come in here, preach it, just preach, and don't see nothing. Don't don't look at nothing going on, don't see nothing. Then he says that to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy disease. In other words, they say we're really for you to lie to us. Just so it make us feel good. I wish I had a witness here. <laughs> boy, boy, boy. I need to tell you, it's already here. It's already here. See, see, in order to hear what they want to hear, those after their own lust, they'll they'll start they'll start getting rid of the folk who tell the truth. Get, 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 get rid of them. Get rid of them. Because we got to pile up on ourselves. We got to multiply folks who just going to tell us how good we are and how, how, how you feel and, and all of those that make you feel good every, every time I leave. And, and so then he, that's what I, listen, please don't get mad at me. I'm just telling you what the word said. He said they will accumulate for themselves folks who will scratch the itch that they have. Anybody ever had an itch? Let me tell you something. If you itch, you'll do anything, man. And I hate the way I get all the way in that middle part of the back because I got so big and I can't. Can't get, to, can't get to the itch. You'll start grabbing stuff. I used to sit at my desk and I'd get rulers and everything. Kind of. And that's what happened with the itch. They have itching ears. And so, and so I'll do anything to get somebody to do what I want them to to do. Yeah, yeah folk, folk will chase after seminars and stuff. Yeah. Nothing, listen, yeah. ain't nothing wrong with a good seminar. But make sure, make sure after after the light show goes on. I wish I had a witness here. After the music stops, when you go in the teaching session, Make sure that you're listening to the word being divide, rightly divided. See, folks will get you in. I wish y'all could see. The package will look good. I wish I had y'all with me here. Yeah, the, 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 the music will be pumping. The light show will be great and the buffet will be scrumptious. But the bottom line is whether or not truth is being put forth. I need to tell you, it's a growing cadre of preachers coming down the line. They ready to accommodate the crowd, and they already got the way of tickling your ears. I wish I had a witness here. Yeah, you'll do a, folk will do a lot of things for filthy lucre. Okay, I'm moving on. Now. First four, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth. Turn unto fables. In other words, it says this means they becoming entrenched in erroneous doctrine taught by heretics to the point that the truth of God's word is no longer accepted. Listen, you can have the biggest physical ears in the world and never want to hear anything. And there's really nothing wrong with these folks hearing. They ain't hard of hearing. They just are hardened to hearing. In other words, Paul says folk will get to the point where they would rather you tell them a myth. They would rather you tell them some fiction rather than the truth. Because let me tell you, sometimes the truth will expose you. Not necessarily you know, but you know on the inside of you that, that I've been what? Exposed. Bible says that even as they did not retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not 
conveying it. In other words, if you just persist in rejecting the truth, it'll get to a point God will just move back, turn you over to your own self, and then let your own self destruct your own self. Can I, can I get a witness here? But I'm going to proceed. Paul admonishes Timothy, though, he says, But watch, thou in all things, and do affliction, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. He says to the believer, you're called to be watchful in all things. Be sober in your thinking, even temper, steady, under control in everything that you do. But I tell you, because there's a cause involved in ministry. There's some persecution that comes with ministry. There are times when you're going to have to endure afflictions in ministry. There are times when adversities are going to come in ministry. In other words, expect bad treatment for those from those who oppose the truth. But Paul says, stay with it. Bear the afflictions with patience. He said, endure the hardness. He said, do the work of sharing the news of Jesus Christ. He said, when do you do it? He said, in season and out of season. In other words, he said, no matter what the temperature is, you still preach the word. No matter what your rank is, because I need to tell you the evangelist that he's talking about is not an office of evangelism. He's talking about every born again believer. So I start by to tell you, therefore, my brethren, be he steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. If I had time, I'd tell you, there's a prize waiting on you. If you go further on down in the text, you'll find that Paul says, there's a crown laid up for me. The righteous judge, can I get a witness here, has a crown laid up for me. Stay the course. Keep on doing the right thing. Keep on telling the truth. Because I start by to tell you, the righteous judge went to Calvary one Friday. The righteous judge died at Calvary. He sees you. He 
sings. And I don't know about you. One of these days, I would love to hear him say, Sandra! Well done. Good and faithful servant. Well done. Perhaps there's someone here today. You stand. God accepted Jesus as your Savior. Now will be the time.